Hi folks, Phil Hurst here, Phil Factor. Have you ever been walking through a Costco and seen Kirkland Signature wines and wondered if they're good or they're not? Today, I'm going to debunk the mystery. Private label wine, smash or pass? Let's have a seat and talk about it. Hey folks, story time. In the late 1990s, a couple of friends and I started a wine company. The objective was to web enable wine sales. Three guys and a PowerPoint went down to Sand Hill Road in Palo Alto, California, and we raised $9 million. This was the height of the dot com craze. It was wild. Two years later, we raised a little bit more money. The bubble burst. It was over. We had a bank account full of cash, but the business was going nowhere. I told my partners, we're not giving that money back. No freaking way. We better figure this out. I had been making private labels in Europe for years, and I thought, wow, why don't we bring this concept to the United States and see what we could do? So I started flying to Cincinnati, Ohio, home of Kroger. I started flying to Boise, Idaho, home of Albertsons. It was going great. They were bringing on our private labels. And then I got a call from Issaquah, Washington. Issaquah, Washington, where is that? That's not wine country. Turns out that was the home of Costco. They wanted to get in the private label wine business. So I said, yes, let's do it. Costco is the king of private labels. So you can bet your ass when they called, I picked up. I made my way to Issaquah. I talked to them about making a private label. I used the experience from Kroger and Albertsons. And yes, indeed, they picked up our private label, a beautiful brand called Ballantre Wine Estates. Wines made from all over the world. We started with Barassa Valley Shiraz, a delicious wine, $9.99. We sold 20,000 cases in the first three weeks. Then I got another call from Issaquah. And of course, I returned the call. It was the CEO. He said, Phil, come up here. I need to talk to you. But the story doesn't end there. Jim Senegal, the CEO of Costco, said, okay, you little whippersnapper, let's give it a go. We're gonna bottle some of your Ballantre wine merchants, the same wine, and put it in Kirkland Signature, and we're gonna sell them side by side. So we did that, and six months later, I got the call, come back to Issaquah. I flew back, I sat down in the office, and Jim said, okay, we put the two wines together, what do you think? I said, I'm not sure. He said, Kirkland outsold Ballantre four to one. What do you think about making Kirkland Signature Wines now, Phil? And I said, Jim, that's a great idea. We should have thought about that before. So retailers love private label wines because it's a wine that they can sell that nobody else can sell. And consumers like private label wines because usually it's a better value than the big brands. So I'm gonna give you a tour of private label wines, starting with Safeway Signature Reserve. Cameraman Clay's got some comments for you. Now I don't drink at all, but being a wine industry professional, I can say a wine like this coming from Safeway Signature Reserve, uh, what I would notice right away is not phenomenal label, but still pretty. Um, however, what we're after is what's inside. Now, you know where we got these wines is we're talking about Safeway and uh, Hey, Phil, is this channel sponsored? Absolutely not. So you know we're paying for all these wines on our own, so I like to give you guys a little rundown of the receipt here. Obviously, with the member discount, you're going to be saving a little bit of money, but um, there's just a rundown of the pricing, how it broke down, just so you guys can see. Safeway Signature Reserve Brut Sparkling Wine. Made in California, that's why we call it sparkling wine. And actually this wine is fermented in this bottle. That's how we capture the CO2. Gotta be a little careful when you're pouring sparkling wines. A lot of CO2 wants to come out of solution. Uh, but we also look at the CO2. That's an indication of quality for us. So we want a very fine bubble, which we see in this wine. Now give it a little swirl. Ah, oh, lovely kind of yeasty bread dough, a little bit of peach, really nice on the aroma.
Ah, wonderful. Rich, round, lively. Thumbs up. And hey, Phil, what's the uh, difference here now? We're looking at carbonation in the champagne. Why is this carbonation and why is it so strong in comparison to my can of Coca-Cola? Yeah, the carbonation is strong. Good question, Clay, because we actually add the yeast to the wine in the bottle with a little bit of sugar. And then we put a cap on top of the bottle. And after that fermentation, that CO2 that's developing from the fermentation really creates a lot of CO2. Hey folks, the next wine, Russian River Valley Chardonnay, a great place to grow Chardonnay. It's very cool there. The growing season is very long. We develop a lot of nice flavor, kind of tropical fruit. This one is like 17 bucks frontline price and with the member price, it gets down to about 10 bucks. Let's give it a go. This one is the 2019 vintage. To be perfectly honest, that's a little bit behind. It should be more like 2020 or 2021, but it is what it is. One of the reasons I say that is when I look at the color right away, I can see it's a little bit straw colored, a little bit hay colored. I'd like to see that it'll be a little bit lighter, a little bit more green-like. Sometimes that's a sign of age. We'll see. Okay, I'm smelling a little bit of age, a little bit of oxidation. Oxidation is like when you cut an apple in half and it starts to turn brown, that's oxidation of fruit and that's what happens in wine and that's why we're seeing this color. And I'm getting a little bit of that character. Not too bad, a little bit of vanilla from the oak, a little butterscotch, a little of that tropical fruit. My magic solo cup makes an appearance again. As oh. always. <laughs> Lovely wine, big rich wine in the flavor. A lot of butterscotch, um, a lot of richness, just a hint of age. I guess what I'd say is, if you're gonna go look for this wine, buy it now and drink it now. Sorry folks, this time Chardonnay, gotta pass. Hey folks, now the signature reserve, Los Carneros Pinot Noir. What do you think about this label, Clay? It's hard to read. I mean, even from here, two feet away, I can barely see what it says. Yeah, it's got some nice elements to it, but it is a little difficult to read. Let's check out the wine. Now this is 2018 Pinot Noir, and like the Chardonnay, I'd like to see this vintage be a little bit more current, make the wine a little bit fresher. Let's have a go. Okay, getting some age again. I'm not loving that. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but it's got a little brickish character. Can you see that, Clay? A little brown meniscus almost. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you very will. good. Very good. The fruit's a little subdued, a little bit tired. Okay. A very soft wine. No technical flaws to it, but very soft. Losing the fruit a little bit. I'm sorry guys, it's a pass. Hey folks, okay, the last of the four wines now. 2021 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a good vintage and it's a more current vintage and I really like to see that. I forgot to mention in the Pinot Noir, that one is like 17 bucks and the member price gets it down to 14. Unfortunately, that wine is just not a buy right now. So let's check out the Napa Cab. I'm very hopeful, you just never know. Looks a little light in color too, seeing you wore that. Yeah, Clay, a little bit light. I'd like to see it darker for an Cat. For an Cat, that's what I'm saying. God, just a little bit soft in the nose again. Just a little bit weak. I want to see more power. This is not a cheap wine. This is like 29 bucks a bottle. I want to see more power. I want to see cherry. I want to see vanilla. I want to see more character, kind of like me. I got a little bit of character. I want to see that in my wine. Come on, let's go. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, just a little bit soft, guys. You know, last time we tasted that Frank family wine, it was great, that Cabernet, big and rich and round. I'd like to see that in this wine, especially for that price. Now look, I'm a private label guy. I made a career, a living, and raised a family on private label wine. Private label wine can be fantastic. Unfortunately, this range just doesn't have what it takes. So Safeway, you got this, figure it out. Hey guys, Phil Factor here, Clay the cameraman jumping in the shot. I just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in to the uh, channel here. Uh, we really appreciate it. If you'd like, 
comment and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton and uh, helps us keep doing this lovely content for you. This is super fun for me, you guys. I'm getting to work with my son. Got this boomer online, making channels. Uh, totally dig it. I hope you like the content. Leave us a comment if you want something different, you want to explore a different kind of wine. Be well.